I have a feeling it's time to get hyped. Damn, he's fast. It's like a cockroach in the middle of the night. Is that, is that a wife? Tangan has arrived. We got some real bad history with Hashira and upper ranking demons. But this time, Tanjiro, Inusuke, Zenitsu are gonna get involved, I feel. That might be enough. Episode 5. Things are gonna get real flashy. I had a feeling they might. Have this small bite of rice for all your restoration needs. Sensu rice. I guess you gotta bleed to get out of work. I see. This is not just a mission for him though. This is about his wives. It's sort of the opposite of what he wanted is happening with all the kids fighting. We found it. Underground? How do they end up down there? Hey! It's cutting through the ground, you know, like it's butter. Is there another battle happening? That's exactly right, how did you know? Was it chipped? It is chipped. But I feel like this is the best thing that could happen for Tanjiro. She's a little bit overconfident. He's not gonna be happy. We have stakes now. You don't win. You die by swordsmith. Yeah, because that's what's important right now. Defending the honor of your swordsmith. Doesn't matter what the stakes are in this situation. Tanjiro will be damned if he lets her slander his swordsmith's good name. Gotta cast those doubts aside. Even if it's right. There's nothing, nothing for you right now. Maybe there's a key insight there. This is a great time for a flashback. <laughs> he practiced it. Oh, it takes a toll on him. <laughs> this is his first thought. And here we go. I had a feeling there was going to be something like this. I think it's been there from the beginning, but not necessarily in the techniques. Tanjiro has always been different, and I think that is exactly what those two recognized about him. It wasn't necessarily his inborn talent. It was something about the fact that he's necessary. He's got something internally that other people don't have. And I don't mean skills. I mean something about his personality and outlook. And so it's never going to suit him or put him at full power to do the same things everyone else has done. That's not what he has to contribute, really. He's not just a sword, right? So I think the water breathing versus fire breathing technique speaks to sort of that latent uniqueness that is necessary for him to transcend out of just like Hashira soldier and become protagonist or hero of the story. But that's pain because that's the unknown. It's higher in some sense. It's harder than imitation. I think just in general, imitation is really great to get you to a point where you have enough things in place where you have the emotional space to explore sort of the unknown, the uncharted in yourself. And that I feel is what's coming out, even if it's at a really early and premature stage. Set your heart ablaze. Yeah, yes. That's so great. Hell yeah. Set your heart ablaze. <laughs> Man, it's just so satisfying having that flashback of Rengoku too. It's exactly what I wanted. And it's more than just technique, it's heart. Tanjiro breathes. Silk Lady, annoyed. But it hurts him. I'm judging you in super fast speed. Did you, what the heck? I, I was sure she cut through his neck. Holy crap. Yeah, I, I learned, uh, you know, a few strikes and also how to teleport. Oh, <laughs> all right. Okay, at least she lives up to the upper demon stuff. That'd be too easy. We have a lot of practice falling in this show. Shake it off. He's had a lot worse falls. <laughs> Calm down as she's rampaging towards him. Damn. It's like a really fast liquid blade. These flashbacks are killing me. <laughs> That's me with Corona this week. <laughs> Everything's fine. I'm fine. Yeah, that's right. So there's a correlation between his body temperature and his abilities in the flame strikes. 
体の熱が上がっているのがわかる戦えてる上限の鬼と I mean, yeah, he's holding his own, right? <laughs> I know he's like, pep talking his way to greatness despite impending death. Yeah, he's like, pep talking his way to greatness despite impending death. I don't think she's coming back. She's a sweater now. Set your heart ablaze! <laughs> Even if this is not it, even if he doesn't get victory all by himself, this is such a huge moment for to Tanjiro. I almost called him Tojiro. It's just in escape. He's harmless. <laughs> Tanjiro's not the only one with a chip on their shoulder. They all have it. Didn't really think that all the way through. That is good to know. <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> He's just like full of talents. All these hidden talents we didn't know about. Yeah, there's something happening underground. Oh, she also, she is now a scarf. They're all scarves. And there's something going on that I'm wondering if maybe this isn't where her actual body is. There's precedent for that. Akasa, Akasa, what the hell's his name? He didn't seem all too worried about losing his head. And we saw that Dream's demon could become a train. Alright, so this is some life left in them. Is there hope after all? No, <laughs> there's no hope. Oh, I see. It's like a refrigerator. Hosenitsu. Yeah, they're coming back. Lips. Is she fighting both of them at the same time? Look at him. He's handling this demon and trash talking while he's at it. That is a really great fix. I love how she's not impressed by Tanjiro, but is immensely impressed by Inusuke. And there's another one coming through the ground. Nice. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> What are they in danger still? This is gross. He has to learn. Tundra's influence. There we go. Don't gotta do it alone. I totally forgot they were also fighters. You know, he's not equipped for these emotions. Yeah. Flashback to the train again. Oh, look who woke up. Or didn't wake up, in this case. Finally, he just gets to see this power. <laughs> Hell yeah. Always amazing. Zenitsu never disappoints. In this case, like, wait, what? You could do this the whole time? You were just a crybaby? <laughs> yeah, yeah. These things. Wow, the rejection knows no bounds for Zenitsu. There he is. You should already feel the power coming from the arrival. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. And he didn't even have to dislocate all his limbs. This is how you do an entrance. <laughs> Destroyer of demons. I believe it. Just feels different when he shows up. Everything else comes to an odd halt. I keep getting the sense from Tengen that Hashira is sort of a side thing for him, and his wives are the main thing. So he's about to do his thing. <laughs> Damn. Wait, but did he just sacrifice some of the victims? And flashback. Pasture victory second. It's okay to run away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Very directly stating what I suspected. First, <laughs> Judging much. <laughs> 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 
悪いことじゃないはずよそういう自分が嫌じゃなければそれでいいのよ Solid. I remember being in high school and having these really grandiose talks with a good friend of mine about like what we would end up doing, and we both sort of had a romantic notion of the world. And I think at the time, a lot of the fantasies that our high school brains could develop involved martyrdom. There was something really appealing about that at the time. In hindsight, I think a lot of that was wanting recognition, or maybe on some level we believed we couldn't live up to our own ideals in life, that we were somehow not good enough to accomplish things, unless it required some sort of ultimate sacrifice. But the more I thought about it, the more I think that's the wrong focus. The focus is on something she just touched on, which is matching your own ideal, and that might include self sacrifice, but that would be a byproduct. In the absence of that, I feel like you're better suited trying to live for a cause than to die for one. It's tough because one of the recurring problems of life, I feel, in so many arenas is that a lot of the best stuff requires faith, and it's really hard to have faith in things that are not yet in hand and to see things that are in hand that are tangible as being of higher value just because we can see them with greater clarity. But I think there's a kind of self sacrifice that stems from a lack of understanding. And interestingly, I think she just alluded to that somewhat by talking about her own lack of value. But that aside, Tengen also gets to be a super stud for his wives, as if he wasn't already. <laughs> Head pets, wife edition. And they are stunned at the power. He's huge. Yes? <laughs> oh, he also can do this. Very flashy. Respect. Oh, this is where the flash begins? <laughs> oh, that, wow, that was short. Yeah, all that stuff before was quite dull. What was even the point of it? I'm only here for the flash. Ah, uh, someone's jealous. I see they managed to find their lady outfits again. You can take the kids out of the entertainment district, but you can't take the entertainment district out of the kids. You don't say. Zunitsu's <laughs> ears are peeled. Where can I sign up for Shinobi training? I can be flashy too, I just choose not to be. So it was a short segment interrupted by about 7 million flashbacks, but I feel like the Tanjiro fight early on was really key. Nothing really developed out of it conclusively, but it feels like a turning point in terms of his development. And it's represented by powers, but I feel like it's more than that as well. It's sort of him having been through all this stuff is kind of coming into a new version of himself. A part of himself that's always been there and that others have recognized, but that he himself has been keeping dormant to some extent. Then Inusuke showing up was badass. It's great to see him shine. He's really grown on me as a character and has surprised me, I think, from introduction to now. He's He's a true bro, turns out. Once he was socialized, I guess, or Tanjiro kind of grounded him to something higher than just wildness, he's ended up being this great secondary protagonist. And then, as expected, a couple of really great action moments, Zenitsu being one of them, and then Tengen's appearance being another one of them, being amazingly epic, and maybe most importantly, Zenitsu embracing his new life as a shinobi.